bone is amongst the second most transplanted organ in the human body. About 75% of birth defects are craniofacial anomalies, which means they require uh, grafting, bone grafting procedures, so this deficiency of bone that is being recognized and needs to be uh, restored in these individuals. Fractures, trauma, war field injury, you know, these are all very significant areas that require for us to be able to, to, to heal and regrow bone. Whenever there's a loss of tissue, we need ways in which we can regrow this tissue in a manner that is very predictable and the quality of the outcome also is superior to our current technology. In terms of bone regeneration, what we're trying to do is stimulate stem cells to, to generate exosomes that are specifically containing messages, that specifically contain messages that are able to stimulate additional cells in the neighborhood to turn into bone cells and form bone. Basically, exosomes act as cellular messengers, like mail packets. So they contain not only proteins, but also genetic information, right? Specifically mRNA that we can use to tailor the information that we want to pass on from one cell to another. So right now we work on two fronts. One is the extracellular matrix and the other is the exosomes with the vision of combining the two to recreate an extracellular environment that stem cells will recognize as a particular tissue and start differentiating to start making that uh, tissue a viable uh, tissue. So we can use this message to influence the outcome of the, the surrounding cells, which means then we can tailor the kind of response in terms of biological response that we would like in that tissue. And so that's what makes it exosomes very unique and attractive for us to be able to work with it. We're also looking at being able to target these messages to specific cell types and specific locations so that the message is also well contained in the area of our interest. The biggest outcome of this research would be an off-the-shelf clinical product that physicians would be able to use to regenerate tissues. For example, if somebody has a complex fracture, and the physician wants to regenerate significant amounts of bone, then they will be able to take uh, a mixture of exosomes that we can engineer for bone regeneration and be able to apply it with existing biomaterials to enable regeneration of, uh, of bone tissue. Beyond bone, you know, we also foresee this technology to be able to, to regenerate other kinds of tissue, muscle, nerve, you know, injury to, to corneal tissues or eye or retina or you know nervous tissue regeneration. So we can envision uh, sort of a nerve patch that uh, that physicians may be able to put around severed nerves that might uh, regenerate nerve function and that is uh, that is something that will take regenerative medicine to the, to the next level. So when we're able to heal a tissue, regenerate the tissue much faster, the benefits go beyond just the regenerated tissue and the specific application we're looking for. We're talking about faster healing times, better quality in terms of the outcomes, but also because the healing is faster, we're also talking about being able to decrease any chance of infection and ultimately decrease the financial burden in terms of the healthcare costs that go with our treatment.